Here at the Murray Group, we recognize the importance of understanding how your health plan works. We work in the health insurance world every day, but we know that most folks don't, and from the outside, it can seem like a messy, complicated process. There's a lot of truth to that, which is why we have created this video to cover some basics of health insurance. We hope this will take some of the mystery out of health insurance and answer some questions you may have been wondering about. Of course, if you have any follow-up questions, you should feel free to call us at 208-765-2620 or toll-free at 877-765-2620. In this video, we will define some common terms you hear when people talk about health insurance. We will also briefly discuss the concepts behind these terms and how they may affect your choice of health plan that your employer offers. Premiums The premium is the monthly payment you and your employer pay for your health insurance. You will see your portion of this payment on your pay stub. Your employer pays the rest, which may or may not be reflected on your pay stub. In almost every case, your portion of the payment is made pre-tax. This means your premium payment is deducted from your wages before income taxes are applied, which reduces the amount you pay in income tax. Deductible The deductible is the amount you must pay towards medical expenses covered by your health plan during the year before your health insurance begins to chip in to help. When trying to decide between two or more plans that offer different deductibles, note that a higher deductible almost always means a lower premium. Premiums you pay for your health insurance do not count toward your deductible. After you have paid out of pocket the amount of your deductible toward covered medical expenses, you have met your deductible. Deductibles reset once a year. This can be when the plan renews or on January 1st. A single health plan will often have more than one deductible. For example, let's say your employer's plan offers a plan with a deductible of $1,500 for an individual and $3,000 for a family. If an employee enrolls themselves, their spouse, and two kids in the plan, then a $1,500 deductible will apply to each individual, meaning for any one person in the family, they must spend $1,500 out of pocket before the insurance will chip in to help pay. But once $3,000 has been spent out of pocket on covered medical expenses for the whole family, regardless of which individuals it was spent for, the family deductible is met and the insurance will chip in to help pay even if the family has not spent $1,500 out of pocket on each individual. Coinsurance Coinsurance is the percentage of your covered medical expenses you must pay after you have met your deductible. Typically, this number is between 5% and 50%, but you should check your health plan documents to find out what your plan provides. In your health plan documents, coinsurance is often described as two numbers, such as 70-30. This means that the insurance covers 70% of the charge billed for covered medical services after your deductible is met, and you are responsible for the remaining 30%. For example, let's say your health plan has coinsurance of 70-30, and you have met your deductible of $1,500. For any further covered medical expenses during that plan year, you will be required to pay 30% of charges billed. So, if your provider bills $100 for a medical procedure, you will be required to pay $30, and your insurance plan will pay the remaining $70. You will be notified what portion of any medical bill is your responsibility to pay. Note that coinsurance can vary depending on whether you visit an in-network or out-of-network healthcare provider. In nearly every case, you will pay more coinsurance for services performed by out of network providers. Copay A copay is the fixed dollar amount you are required to pay at the time a specific medical service is provided to you. Not all medical services provided to you will require a copay. Your health insurance plan documents will describe what services have a copay and those that don't. Copays are typical for doctor's office visits, prescriptions, and hospitalizations, but may apply in other circumstances too. Generally, copays do not count toward your deductible, and you must pay any applicable copays even if you have already met your deductible. 
network. This refers to the group of healthcare providers and facilities that have agreed to accept your health plan's insurance. These providers are referred to as being in-network. This matters because going to an in-network provider will almost always cost you less in coinsurance than a provider who is not in the network, usually called an out-of-network provider. One exception to this rule is emergency medical services, which are always covered as if they are in-network, even if they are performed by an out-of-network provider. However, this does not mean that any medical services performed at the emergency room are always in-network. Non-emergency medical care received at an out-of-network emergency room will be subject to out-of-network coinsurance rates. Emergency rooms should be used only for emergency medical attention. There is one more concept we'd like to cover. Health savings accounts. Plans that have a high deductible sometimes come with a health savings account known as an HSA. An HSA is a bank account you and your employer can contribute to and withdraw money from to pay for medical expenses that you or your spouse or dependents incur. This account can help you pay your deductible, co-pays, and other out-of-pocket medical costs. One of the main benefits of an HSA is that the money is not subject to income or other taxes as long as you use it for qualified medical expenses. If you use HSA funds for, to pay for non-medical expenses, you may be subject to taxes and penalties by the IRS. You and your employer can contribute to the HSA account pre-tax. The maximum amount that can be contributed is set by the IRS and may change from year to year. The money in the HSA account, including what your employer gives you, is yours even if you switch jobs and if your new employer doesn't offer an HSA and you won't have to worry if you have money left over at the end of the year in your HSA because unlike a flexible spending account, commonly known as an FSA, the HSA funds are not subject to the use it or lose it rule. HSA money rolls over from year to year and does not expire. If you participate in an HSA, you may receive a debit card associated with that HSA to make using those funds to pay out-of-pocket medical costs easier. Now that we've covered a few of the basics, let's look at an example of how these concepts interact in a health insurance plan. Let's say Jane works for the ABC company. The ABC health insurance plan that Jane enrolled in has a $3,000 annual deductible and coinsurance of 7030. Jane's monthly premium of $500 is deducted pre-tax from her paycheck every two weeks in the amount of $250 half of the monthly premium. Jane has an accident at home where she hurts her hand. Jane goes to the urgent care clinic in the neighborhood. The clinic is in network. Jane gets an x-ray and ends up with a broken thumb, which the doctor puts in a splint, and which is later put in a cast. Here is how the charges for this visit to the clinic will work out for Jane. The original charge for her visit to the clinic is $1,300. Then, $200 is taken off because of the discount that applies to charges from in-network doctors and clinics, leaving a total charge of $1,100. Jane has used her insurance a few other times this year and has already paid $2,600 out of pocket toward her deductible. That means she must pay $400 more out of pocket to meet her deductible of $3,000 before the insurance company will start helping out. After Jane's $400 out of pocket to meet her deductible, there is still $700 left on the bill from the clinic. Jane's plan has a 70-30 coinsurance, which means that the insurance company is responsible for 70% of charges after the deductible has met, and Jane is responsible for 30%. Of the remaining $700 then, the insurance company must pay 70% or $490, and Jane must pay 30%, or $210. In the end, of the original $1,300 charge from the clinic, Jane was responsible for $610, $400 to meet her deductible, and $210 to cover her share of the coinsurance. Jane has an HSA account that she has been putting money into for a couple years, and she has enough in it to pay what she owes for her visit to the clinic. 
so Jane uses her HSA debit card to pay the $610. Remember, since Jane has met her deductible in our example, the coinsurance will apply immediately to any further medical expenses Jane incurs through the rest of the plan year. Note, however, that Jane will still be responsible to pay her premiums and any coinsurance that applies.